All right, so <laughs> very, very here we go. Start with, yeah. First game of the new season. Yes, uh, first game of the uh, first international championships of this new season, and it does look like Caleb will be going first, or uh, Diego's going yeah. first. No? Uh, I believe the names are just switched, but uh, Diego is playing. Yeah, but yes, so, yeah, so the, the names are switching around. <laughs> So uh, Diego here going to be starting off with a nest ball. Just going to have a look through, and uh, yeah, he's going to find out that uh, two of his ultra balls are prized straight from the get-go, and that's uh, not going to be happy news for him. Yeah, and uh, starting that snubble, giving his opponent what he's playing right away. It's just yeah, I'm playing grand ball. Yeah. You're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> going to uh, be good news. And oh, there is, as, as you mentioned, there is the apricorn maker. So apricorn maker enabling you to go through your deck and look for any two cards with ball in the name when you train the cards with ball in the name and put them into your hand. Yeah, uh, you would think it's kind of innocuous. People tried to play this when Bridget first rotated. Like, well, I'm going to have a lot of nest balls and ultra balls in my deck. Might as well get them out. It ended up being not as good as just playing Lily or something for your turn one. No, it's, it's just it's, it's sort of one of those things where you rather just you know, draw into all your basics as well as other things rather than just, uh, go, just go for the two basics. Whereas the, the third basic off the Bridget normally was enough to warrant picking that instead. But uh, here, like you said, because you can get Ultra Ball later on and just spin out your hand, Apricorn Maker just makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and when you're a deck that plays pretty much no draw supporters, uh, it's looking like the only draw supporter Diego actually plays is a Tate and Liza. Wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's... that's... So you're pretty much all in with the Makagos and the Orangurus here. Yeah, and then he has that Zeep Striker as well from Lost Thunder. Uh, just with its sprint ability, uh, being able to discard your hand and then draw four cards. That's... It's really what he's going to be focusing yeah. on here. It's a uh, Zeb Striker is almost kind of like the new uh, Octillery, almost not quite the same, obviously, because you'd have to discard your whole hand, but at least you are always guaranteed to draw cards, which is. Uh, it's a, it's a, I think in some ways it's actually better than uh, Octillery in that sense, because it, it, in certain decks, at least, again, the synergy works nicely, and because you're always guaranteed like a higher card draw. Yeah, especially in this deck where you can have those awkward draws where you're like, oh, I have Rescue Stretcher and a Shrine of Punishment in my hand, and I have a Shrine of Punishment in play. I can't play either of these. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll discard them and then try my luck again. Yeah, yeah exactly. So it's a really fantastic card. Now, uh, going switching over to Caleb's side, he's starting off with the new supports we mentioned, Professor Elm's Lecture, enabling him to get two Zoras and a Tissot Prism Star from the deck. Yeah, uh, this is the exact start he wanted. I, I'm guessing it would be better if he just got it with the lecture instead because that Tapu Lele is a liability on the bench. Gramble hits 170 very easily. Yeah, yeah it does. All, all he needs to hit 170 is uh, the, the choice band to reach the 190, which would be enough of the knockout. But even so, um, Caleb's start is pretty impressive here because, I mean, three Zoras and a Ditto out, uh, he'll, he'll be happy to you know, give up the the Tapu Lele down if you're gonna set up it's gonna be that strong because of it. Yeah, this whole match is gonna be dependent on if Diego can keep a con constant zero card hand. Yeah. Uh, yeah he's gonna be doing stuff during his turn. His deck uh, has this engine that makes it just so smooth. And with Instructs, Smooth Over, and Sprint, he's gonna be able to go through his deck, find what he needs, and it's really going to be up to Caleb to try to disrupt that. Yeah, definitely. Now, like you mentioned, uh, Caleb is playing more this sort of control variant of Zorark. But one thing that uh, Ditto enables you to do is play, play different like stage one texts of cards that you'd otherwise need to dedicate more slots to. And it's important to note this because Caleb is actually playing an Alolan Muck. With no Alolan Grammar? No, exactly, because you could just evolve it up in the Ditto. And that's important because that means that if um, Caleb is able to deal with uh, oh. Diego's Blitzel, or Zeb Striker, rather, then that means he gets to shut off Oranguru and shut off all his draw. Yeah, and here we go. Diego's turn two is a pretty good one. Has the Guzma and the Knockout on that Tapu Lele GX on the bench already down to four prizes. That's insane. It's, uh, that is the power of Gramble, able to take such a big knockout with a non-GX Pokemon from turn two. It's, uh, but there, there goes a counter capture from Diego. Uh, what's he brought up with that? I, I'm guessing it's probably either, oh uh, yeah, Rangaroo. Uh, pretty much all of them have Big Retreat, the Slugma, and you really just have to choose which one you want. Yeah, so deciding that uh, Rangaroo is the best choice there. Uh, after that, Diego does, does just play the Cynthia. 
yeah, not really having any access to Zorark GX there. Uh, no. Really hoping to draw it here. Has a timer ball. He does. This is probably the card I hate the most in the format, but it's also probably one of the best cards in the format as well. Yeah, absolutely it is. Uh, Diego there, or rather Caleb flipping, looks like one out of two heads, so he's able, he's able to get something at least. But yeah, when you whenever you play a timer ball, you just flip double tails, you just kind of sort of look at your hand and just, just end up feeling a bit <laughs> sad. <laughs> All right, this will for sure. Looks like he's eyeing down that Alolan Muck here. Well, again, it, it would shut off uh, Diego's Oranguru, uh, which would mean that uh, Diego's draw power is much lessened compared to what it could be. And it's a good thing that Diego does play that Zep Striker, otherwise he, so the Alolan Muck would completely shut down Diego's entire engine. Yeah, one thing it also shuts down is that Ditto Prism Star as well. Yeah. yeah. Really acting is just a snubble right now. <laughs> now, there, there goes uh, the evolution to the Zorak. I do believe we see like a trade there, and it's like he's got an, he's got an Ultra Ball, so he will be able to fetch himself another Zorak here, or potentially the London Mark if he feels like that's the best thing going for him. There's the Ultra Ball. Now, Discarding Plumeria, uh, one of the cards that is pretty good in Zorark. Yes, being able to pick and choose what energy you want to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's, it's really strong because of that. Uh, he does actually just go for the muck there, and uh, he... Oh, and there is an important stadium card in this matchup. Caleb actually plays two copies of Lysander's Lab. So this is a this, this is a card which uh, shuts off the effects of all tool cards on the field, I believe. Yeah. 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 So that means that the choice band will no longer be working from Caleb's side. So yeah, very, very important here. And that's big because that's how Caleb, or that's how Diego really gets his damage output going especially against cards like Tapu Lele and Zorark GX. Yeah, so now he'll have to rely on finding the Count Stadium on two fronts, because not only will it re-enable his tools, but it'll do that one sort of tick of damage over to KO things like Tapu Lele and to bring things like Zorark into closer range. And Diego did start his turn with uh, Apricorn Maker. Gets that Ultra Ball. The problem is now that he's played the Apricorn Maker, he might have a bit of difficulty getting this Oranguru out of the active. I don't believe his. I don't believe he's playing a huge amount of switching cards here. I mean, Go Guzma would be one, but obviously he can't play that because uh, that's he's already played a supporter. Yeah, you have Tate and Liza, but again, that's just another supporter. Yeah. There's looks like one copy of Switch. <laughs> yeah. So and uh, I'm not sure if he's uh, played it yet. I don't believe he has. But oh, but he can find it with Macargo here. Yeah, Makaro really making this deck tick, uh, being able to smooth over, search your deck for any card, put it on top of your deck, and then since you're playing a Ranguru and Zeb Strika, it's just, all right, I'll put it into my hand. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that Zeb Strika paying off in spades here, because, oh, that's Pokemon Catcher. <laughs> the, it's a heads. The OG Pokemon Catcher. Yep, bringing up that Alola Muck, the real, like, recognizing the threat it poses, and now with the Zep Striker, you can sprint to draw four cards. Oh, and he gets the Shrine of Punishment as well. Oh, that is fantastic. Oh, it's looking like he has another Shrine. Oh, no, but he doesn't like yeah. have the switch. So no attack there from Diego. Oh, dear. So now it's back to Caleb. Now, of course, that Alola Muck does have a retreat cost of four, so unless uh, Caleb is able to find a Guzma, he's going to have a hard time getting out of the active. So that's the one thing that's playing into Diego's favor here. But uh, there's, you know, oh, there's a Team Skullgrunt. Oh, that is not a good hand from Diego either. No, no well, it's Almost not. for sure is going <laughs> to sprint that away. Yeah. Um, but that is... Uh, yeah, what does, what does Caleb do with that information now? Uh, this, yeah, choice ban. Oh, oh, looks like Caleb just passed. Yeah, uh, he doesn't really have much in his hand. His Zork only access to one trade, uh, so didn't hit anything off of that. All right, Skullgrunt pass. Yeah, that's, I mean, at least uh, he knows what um, Diego has, I guess, but yeah, not really ideal. But this is really what Caleb wants. He wants to slow the game down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diego popped out the gate, took two prizes, and it's really like just a super aggressive deck versus a deck that really isn't going to take much prizes throughout the game. No, no, definitely. And also, not only that, but uh, I mean, the Gramble decks, because obviously they, they focus mainly around uh, playing, playing lots of cards from the hand and sort of fitting your hand out to the point where you're able to 
just to do the extra the 160 damage. The energy count is quite low, so actually Diego is only playing six fairy energy. So if at any point, uh, you know, Caleb can just hit an energy or two off his gold grunt, that's uh, you know a big chunk of the actual means of powering up attackers that Diego has gone. Yeah, uh, you really just kind of hope with the six fairy and then your Diantha that you get there. Yeah, exactly. If it's uh, you know, if that gets discarded, then that's uh, not going to work out. Oh, there's a crushing hammer from Caleb, and that is ahead. So that again goes one of those very few energy that that uh, Diego has access to. And, and the Diego. max potion is pretty big there too. Even though it was only two damage counters on that Zorark, that's all Diego needs to actually take the knockout with Choice Band. Yeah, exactly. So that that means now that's uh, although. The max potion won't be able to make a difference unless Diego can, sorry, unless Caleb can find the counter stadium now. Because if that shrine of punishment stays, then the two ticks of shrine damage will, will happen again by the time that uh, Diego goes to do his attack, and it will still be a KO on the Zoroark with the choice band on the, on yeah, the ground. And he wall. only has access to one Lysander's lap left, so another pass here. Rainbow Energy coming down on that Orangaroo. Mm -hmm. So you might be seeing some resource management uh, a little bit later on. Just, uh, of course, a very important card, especially in the like, control variants of Zoroark. Being able to take any free cards from your discard pile and put them on the bottom of your deck, just getting back those important resources to really slow the game down and take and see yeah, what Yeah, uh, we've win. seen this card take over so many games. And the power it has, especially in combination with Zoroark GX, uh, it, who would have thought? <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah, who would have thought that no, that's uh, such a... Yeah, such a simple effect would uh, end up be, uh, being so powerful, such so resonant within the within the Zorak variants like that. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how Diego attempts to pull this back here because is it? Oh, he has found the Titan Lizer. So there he is. Able to, of course, Titan Lizer having two different effects. Uh, one of which enables you to just shuffle into your hand into your deck and draw five cards, or you can use it to just switch your active with your bench Pokemon. So it's kind of like a Tapu Lele searchable switch in that sense. Yeah, and it looks like after that instruct for the Tate and Liza, Diego just sprinted, but it looks like he can't play any of his cards in his hand, and he passes. Oh dear, so no access to yeah, energy to power up Gramble, just uh, not able to do anything really, and so now it's back to Caleb. We see another Zorak GX in his hand, as well as drawing Ultra Ball and Timer Ball here. But the question is, does he want to commit more Zoroarks to the field with that Shrine of Punishment in play? Well, that, that is that's a tricky, tricky question. Of course, he does have to. He, he needs to do these righteous beatings at some point. He needs to actually knock things out. He needs to draw more cards. But yeah, like you said, the more Zoroarks are down, the more that Shrine of Punishment damage keeps adding up. And then Gramble's just licking its lips, ready to you know come in with the come in with it all out and knock things out. Pulls out a Macargo of his own. But with no Slugma on the bench, I think this might just get traded away. Yeah, there's uh, no Slugma, no, no Ditto either. That would have been the other way he would be able to get it out. But the dead goes down to second Zoroark now. And yeah, there's the trade, discarding the Makago. It's actually crazy to see that Diego's deck is smaller than Caleb's yes, because of all the draw power that he's gone through. Yeah. And there is a very important rip there from Caleb. He does find the Guzma, so able to switch into it actually goes into the orange guru so again he's just playing it kind of conservative here going for the resource management gonna get back looks to be a guzma and oh, that's oh he's just deciding between those four i guess yeah and honestly diego's already used tate and liza he has one switch left after that can can he win I, I, I'm honestly not sure. Again, this goes down to the problem that uh, I said before. He has the Guzmas. Yeah, he has Guzmas, but that's pretty much it. The amount of sort of energy resources and switching resources that Diego plays is quite low. So maybe this is the game plan that Caleb has in mind already. Just use resource management to keep getting back these stall cards, essentially, until Diego just can't physically do anything anymore. Yeah, that's essentially how Caleb chose to build his deck. Uh, reminiscent of the deck that Jimmy Pendarvis won Portland Regionals with an Expanded, where yeah. it just... I'm not really going to take prizes, I'm just going to take over the game and yeah. try to get the game to a point where you can't play Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, just to knock out the knock out anything that's, you know, can somehow disrupt me, but then other than that, yeah, just to play it very slow, just build up build up my resource pool again, just stop, like you said, stop the opponent from playing the game more than anything else. And there we see a sprint. Uh, Diego's deck is looking pretty thin right now. Yeah, it's... 
it's a bit of a problem because you know you want and need to do this because you need to be able to draw more cards to thin out your hand in order to put everything down to do the big numbers to get the KOs. But at the same time, if you do it too much, then your deck ends up so thin that your Caleb could even choose to maybe use deck out as a win condition. Oh no, and this is the awkward point right here. He drew a Snubble, so he has a Gramble and a Choice Ban, but with the Snubble in hand and no bench space, he's not going to be able to play it down, meaning he won't get the full all-out where it would have been a knockout on Zorark. Now it's just 60 damage. Yeah, yeah a very unfortunate turn, turn of events. Now for, for Caleb, there's a pretty much an ideal Ultra Ball there from him. He's able to discard Enhanced Hammer and uh, Press Elm's Lecture, both of which are cards he doesn't really need right now. And looks like he's uh, just going to play the Cynthia after that. Yeah, that's pretty much the whole idea behind a Zorark GX deck, where I'm going to play all these cards that are good for certain matchups. And if I'm playing a matchup where it's useless, then I can just discard it with pretty much anything in my deck. Yeah, exactly. Just being able to... It, 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 just, it was especially good, of course, when N was present, because that just meant that, you know, any time that uh, your opponent would end you, you could you play the game in a way where you discarded what you needed earlier and just uh, made sure that anything you drew off N was actually useful. But even now, with less disruption cards, it's still, you know, enabling you to get rid of the stuff you don't need so that you always draw into the stuff you do need. And there we see the Lysander Lab come down from Caleb, his second one, meaning that that choice band's not really doing much right now. No. And if he, if Diego can't even get his hand down to zero, he cannot take a knockout on the Zorark. No, it's a very, very unfortunate turn for him. Of course, uh... Ooh, again, that Alolan Muck is proving dividends, just stranding that Ditto Prism Star on the bench. Yeah. Diego has all these stage ones in his hand, needs to play him down, but it's just not power. good. No, there's a Pow Pad, it's like shuffling in, it looks like there'll be a Deanthra and a Guzma. Could use Macago can combine with sprints maybe to do something, but no, actually it's just going to be another another n non full damage all out. Yeah, and then of course we talk about Diego's deck and how it doesn't play any really draw supporters. One of the supporters it really does try to utilize is Diantha. Uh, you're able to play it if your fairy Pokemon was knocked out the previous turn, and you get two of any card in your discard, put them back in your hand. Yeah, yeah. Well, Do since he plays the three full copies. Caleb's not really taking knockouts in this game. No, no, and uh, that's again just further disrupting Diego's engine. He has this entire game plan in mind as to you know how he's going to progress through. But uh, pretty much Caleb's deck is purpose built uh, to make sure that all those strategy enablers can't happen. There's an Ace of Rolla from Caleb here, just cleaning off that Zorark GX, and there oh. it prompts the concession. Yeah, so. Diego realizing that with another resource management, Caleb's getting back too many things that are going to stop him attacking. And yeah, we are on to game two, ladies and gentlemen. Caleb takes game one. It, it, it kind of seems like in this matchup, if Caleb gets set up the way he wants, it's almost impossible for Diego to win. Yeah, it's uh, when you, and the thing is, the deck setting up the way it wants, it's Zorak GX deck. Odds are it's going to use trade and you know, draw cards to set up the way it wants every single game because that's what Zorak GX decks do. It'll be interesting to see. Diego did have a pretty good start right out the gate with that Guzma on that Tapu Lele turn two to take two prizes, yeah. but those were the only prizes he took that game. Yeah, because from then on, Caleb was able to sort of control Diego's deck in a way where he could never just get, get quite enough damage to knock out anything significant. Yeah, and then of course, there was some unfortunate draws of him just not being able to play his cards out in his yeah. hand. Yeah, exactly. So that combined with uh, the way Caleb played things out just meant that Caleb was able to take that game fairly convincingly. So, I mean, going into game two, what Diego really needs to do here is to sort of do, do to have a similar sort of start to the one he did in the first game, but then just make sure he's able to follow that up with two more turns, which are the same, just go knock out, knock out, knock out, win. Uh, he does have the advantage of going first, and he also has the advantage of now knowing what Caleb's deck is. Yes, exactly. So he'll probably try to be maybe a little bit more conservative with his draws and uh, make sure that he's not you know, discarding so much that he runs out of switching cards if you know, Caleb opts to do a few Guzma stalls for a few turns, for example. Looking there, prizes don't look too bad. Only one Ultra Ball. And then from Caleb's side, looks like a Crusher Hammer, a Counter Catcher, one Zora, but again, a, a good enough mix of things that it shouldn't be too disruptive. 
Yeah, and one important card to note that Diego now is aware of is that Alolan Muck. Yes. Yes, so of course, uh, he, he wants to now just make sure that he evolves that Ditto into something before the Alolan Muck comes into play so it doesn't just end up stranded again. And it looks like the Great Ball did not get anything there. One of the few drawbacks of that card. Uh, it's been seeing quite a lot of play, but it's really just a hit or miss. Yeah, yeah it is. It's, it's interesting with Great Ball because, of course, it's one of these cards that didn't really see much of any kind of play at all previously, but it seems that now, because with essentially better options have rotated out, Great Ball's all of a sudden the next best thing, and so it's sort of creeping back into the list again, just as a one or two of to complement the missing slots from the other search cards that have rotated out standard. Yeah, I think the last time Great Ball saw play was when it actually was Nest Ball. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. It was back in the Ruby Sapphire era, it had the exact same effect as Nest Ball, uh, just they were able to get a basic Pokemon, bring a deck and put it onto the bench. Now, over to Caleb's side, we do see he's been able to start with the Tapu Lele GX again. Wonder Tag gonna grab himself to Professor Elm's Lecture and again with that incredible start, just enabling enabling him to get two Zoros and a Ditto. And this is what Professor Elm's Lecture like allows you to do, especially in a Zoroark deck, because all you really need, okay, I'm gonna get as much Zora as I can in play. That way next turn I can get as much Zoroark GX in play as I can. Yeah, and uh, and that means I can draw lots of cards, and if you're drawing lots of cards, you're probably winning games. <laughs> He has Timer Ball and Ultra Ball in his hand as well. His hand is pretty stacked here. Now. So he's going to bench all of that. And uh, yeah, he's pretty happy to, like you said, his hand being stacked as it is, he's happy to just sit on this right now, pass. Diego only has the Ditto out. So he can get a Grand Ball out this turn, but he can't. He has less things uh, to evolve from. That means he can play out more cards from his hand. So that might be something he needs to consider when he's deciding what to discard of Ultra Ball, for example. Yeah, and Mysterious Treasure is a pretty unique card in a deck like this. He has actually zero targets in his deck, no Psychic or Dragon Pokemon, and he's really just playing it so he can discard a card from yeah, his hand. Which is crazy to think about, but it's, you know, it, he it works. He actually plays two copies. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's because sometimes you only want to discard, like, one thing, so you can't just rely on your cards like Ultra Ball, which discard two, or... Fiery like, Flint. Fiery, Fiery Flint, or even stuff like uh, Plumeria as well. It's, uh, now... And WoW actually opts to evolve the Ditto into the Macargo here, really trying to get his full setup, and this is where we see his game plan change from game one, where, yeah, yeah I, I don't need to, like, knock out, knock out, knock out. I just need to make sure I can knock out later on. Yeah. Especially because it would turn on counter capture from Caleb. Yes, yes, it would. So there goes the Apricorn Maker again, like last game, but this time not grabbing two Nest Ball, grabbing a Nest Ball and an Ultra Ball. There it is. Discarding, the, is that the rest of his hand at this point? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it. So down goes the Snubble. And I believe still has one Instruct left. So he's able to, to be able to do like a little bit more still as well. And there it is, uh, Blitzel as well. He, of course, Diego realizing how important it is for him to have access to a stage one draw Pokemon that won't be shot off by a Lola Muck because Caleb will almost certainly evolve that, uh, uh, use the ability to turn that Ditto into a Lola Muck next turn. Yeah, well, we actually saw it in his hand. Yeah, exactly. Again, that Fiery Flint you mentioned earlier, like I said, just in method of discard. Discards two, I believe? Yes, yeah, discards two from hand to search for four Fire Energy, which, of course, Diego plays none of. <laughs> It's such a powerful card, too. Uh, I'll be, it'll be interesting to see if it actually gets played in Fire Decks or if it's just a card that goes in Gramble. Yeah. We, we saw at the uh, Frankfurt Regional Championship, some people are playing it uh, with uh, Ho-Oh GX and Reshiram GX. The idea being you can use Reshiram GX's attack uh, first uh, after doing a turn on Kiawe, and then you can attach four from hand to the Ho-Oh, so it's, sort of, it's a knockout attack that sets up your next one quite nicely. Action back on Caleb here, uh, just looking with a stacked hand. Yeah, so here's Time Ball again. Oh, that's a Tails. Is Off that screen, what is it? it? I think that's a double Tails. Yeah, that, and that's the drawback yeah. you have of playing Timer Ball, but he does have two Ultra Ball and a card that he does not need in this matchup in Enhanced Hammer to discard. Yeah, I was going to say, if, uh, <laughs> if you get to pick a turn to pick double Tails, it would be this one. I mean, my goodness, look at this board state. <laughs> Two Zorark, a Lolan Muck, Cynthia with no cards in hand, still has both his trades left to him. That's wow. Yeah, th th this is going to be another ridiculous turn from Caleb. And uh, if you're Diego here, you're going to be looking at this and thinking, oh no, not again. <laughs> oh, and not to mention, 
Caleb's usual strategy is bringing up the heavy retreat Pokemon from Diego. Diego did that for him by having to evolve into that Macargo. Yeah, not able to retreat the Ditto before doing so means that, yeah, that Diego's going to have a very hard time getting that out of the way. And even, um, even better from Caleb's side is that there's now even more cards in his hand, which he just doesn't need, that he can discard off trade, like things like Enhanced Hammers, which we'll do, we don't have, never be able to use. And that's why a deck like Zorark plays so many copies of a certain card. Uh, we see a full four Professor Elms in his deck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to get this turn one, and then I can just... It turns into a discard draw two. Yeah. Yeah. It's because, I mean, it, opening with Professor Elms Lecture without having to tap with Lele for it is absolutely insane, because not only do you get yeah, that mega, mega consistent start, but then you don't even need to leave that two prize liability on your bench. And if you play four, you just maximize the chances of that happening. All right. Diego's turn again. We do see a smooth over. He also has that switch in his hand, the one coffee there. But and then just a pass. pass. Uh, there is no access to Zeebstrika here. And with both of those Orangaroo shut off. Oh dear, this is again this is not a good place to be. What, what happened to the, the Blitzel? I, I believe he was deciding between the Blitzel and the Snubble. And oh, then and then decided. chose the snubble. Right, okay. But yeah, but look, at, look at the size of Caleb's hand right now. He's got access to everything. There's a skull grunt as well. And it, really, skull grunt here is just for information. It's like, okay, I want to know what you have in your hand. That way I can decide what my game plan is going forward. Yeah. Like, okay, you're not really drawing into much of the stuff. Oh, you have your switch. Okay, I'm going to change my game plan. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it looks like... Uh, Diego does draw into a fairy energy now. Yeah, it's what he smoothed over for last turn. Yeah. And we might just see another smooth over pass, maybe. It's kind of, kind of like you said, just changing his game plan in a sense, just to make sure that he sets himself up to you know, slowly build up to that those, those uh, six prizes rather than just uh, going, straight for it away, going straight away for it from the turn two. And uh, how smart of it was to, for Diego to put the energy on top of the deck, the one place where Skullgrunt can't find it. Yes, exactly. So that you know you'll have it, but it can't be touched by uh, what, uh, by Caleb Skullgrunt. It's uh, truly the, the hallmark player from you know, a former world champion. On yep. top of the deck. And then let's see. There's another pass. So this is exactly what Caleb wants to happen here. It is, but at the same time, it means that Diego's playing his deck in a way where he isn't as affected, uh, isn't as affected by what Caleb does and the kind of control style that Caleb plays. So it's it's kind of a, it's a double-edged sword in that sense. There's another trade, and still that massively stacked hand. He doesn't even know what to do with most of it. Yeah, uh, one unfortunate thing for Caleb is he does not have the bench space for that Orangaroo. having the. Zora in the active spot, really just wanting Diego to knock it out. He's like, here, come on. Yeah. You, you can knock it out. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but uh, no, this is what that's happening. Diego's going to be patient as well. He's just going to wait until he has... Oh, that, is that a timer ball, I believe? Uh, Pokemon catch it. Oh, there we go. So I, I, I believe this might be the turn we see Diego try to go off and take the knockout on that Alolan Muck. Yeah, because now, of course, he... He, he, he has the means taken out. He's set himself slowly up over the course of the past few turns to enable this. Yep, there it is. Field blower, his own choice ban, just so we can get to zero cards in hand. Smooth over for the perfect card he needs next turn. And one thing about taking the knockout on this Alolan Muck, that is the last time you're going to see it because he does not play any Grimer. No, he doesn't. And uh, I don't believe he plays any... Well, I was going to say he doesn't play any recovery cards, but even if he did, of course... Ditto Ditto, Prism. Yeah, exactly. So Ditto being a Prism Star Pokemon does go to the Lost Zone when it would go to the discard pile. So that means that, yeah, there's no access to a lot of luck for Caleb for the rest of the game. And this is the patient play that uh, Diego would have been building himself up for because now he's going to have access to all those instructs for the rest of the game and he'll be have a much easier time taking those next prizes. It will turn on Caleb's counter catchers and free up a bench space for him. So now we'll just have to see. This will probably be where Diego's like, okay, now I need to start racing. Yeah. Now that he has everything fully set up. So there is first, first prize for Diego. Now Caleb 
does have that bench slot free uh, if he wants to put down Noranguru, but first he needs to decide what to bring up and well, oh, he's bringing up mistake. Sableye. That, that isn't a Zora. I thought it was a Zora. It's a Sableye. Yeah. So Limitation for its attack. Yes. One dark. And it stops your opponent from being able to play any support cards during their next turn. And uh, you might think, well, Caleb doesn't really play dark energy. He plays two rainbow energy. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so he is actually able to make use of it. And uh, yeah, Limitation, it's one of those attacks that can just, it's really effective at buying you turns because your opponent can't goose before the game. Your opponent can't, you know, take the to switch for the game. There's, you know, a lot of game winning support plays which are shut off by Limitation, which buys you a little bit of extra time to find your win condition instead. And we actually see Caleb here opting for the first Riotus beating of the match. <laughs> At long last, so able to, yeah, KO the Vakago, which is of course the only one that Diego has out, so that means no access to Vakago for this turn at least. Oh, there is a Blitzel though, and there's a Pal Pad. So, yeah, the problem now being, Diego's going to have to rely on luck and hit the things that he needs with Instruct, just drawing it rather than being able to smooth over to guarantee that he hits what he needs. Is, since the switch is gone from Diego, is Caleb's ultimate win condition just bring up a Ranguru and limitation? Possibly, yeah. I mean, because that would that would stop uh, Diego from being able to use Guzma to switch out and uh, or take the Liza. So, yeah, that might that might even be what he's thinking of, and that's probably why he opted not to bring up the Stabilize so quickly uh, and just take out the Vicargo first to stop Diego from being able to do what he needs to do more consistently and then use the Finder's own Guzma, use Limitation and potentially win the game from there. Would not be surprised at all if that's what he's going for. All right, there we see a Nest Ball, I believe. Does Diego have access to a Fairy Energy? There's Instruct, it's a Snubble. No. Actually having two cards in his hand, he can't play down this turn and there is a pass. Uh, that is not ideal for Diego at all. So now Caleb has another turn to sort of decide how he wants to approach this. Now, important thing to mention is that uh, Gramble actually has psychic, or sorry, 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 dark resistance. So Caleb's going to have, have a hard time KOing this Gramble, actually. Caleb's deck looking pretty thin as well, but with a Rangaroo, that's never a problem. No, indeed not. Oh, how, about, how thin is Caleb's deck looking right now? Yeah, it's like three or four cards. It's, it's really, yeah, not ideal at all. You see there, but both uh, both Ditto Prisms in the in the Lost Zone there, sort of from the overhead view. We'll see that pretty much all day. Yes, because <laughs> the Ditto Prism is just that good a card and so versatile and so. Uh, Ditto Prism, at its worst, is just a fifth of your main basic for your uh, for your attacker. But at its best, it, it can. It's anything. Yeah, it's <laughs> a, just an incredible card all around. There, there is the retreat. Oh, and uh, up comes the Oran Guru, so I'm assuming, yeah, he's got the double colorless there in hand. Oh, he's got a rainbow too. He can probably, yeah, choose to attach a double colorless and just go for the resource management. This is really clever because, of course, the double colorless is one more energy than he, than he needs to do resource management, but he can now use the double colorless to retreat later and bring up the Sableye and do a limitation if he wants to go for that win condition. And I just want to point out how consistent Caleb has built his deck. It is Fort Helms four Ultra Ball, four Timer Ball. And you see it like just him searching through his discard. They're all together. That's so much Pokemon search. Yeah, so many good players uh, in the, over the course of Pokemon TCG history have always lived by the mantra. Uh, Tom, Tom Dolezal comes to mind, especially consistency is king. You know, when you're playing any a card game of any kind, you need to sort of battle against the inherent inconsistency of your own deck by the virtue of it being a card game. So minimizing that luck factor in your own deck and playing all these cards which may enable you to find what you need every single time and playing them in maximum copies to enable that further. That's what's going to get you win after win after win at a big tournament over the course of nine rounds. And we're looking at Diego's deck here. I believe there's only three fairy energy left out of his six. Yeah, so it's not, it's not a big number. Taken one prize. Yeah. And I don't believe Diego is playing any kind of uh, energy recovery either. So yeah, only Diantha. Only Diantha, yeah. So it's not really ideal. We have, we have seen um, some, uh, some lists for... 
like for energy this deck. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so I'll just play energy recycle system because that can just you know, get back one energy or equally just you know, shuffle free back in. Then you have access to more attacks. But uh, Diego is not playing uh, playing that. So yeah, it's quite quite a tricky one. Yeah, opting to get the Shrine of Punishment with Smooth Over. I uh, could be thinking like, well, my only game plan is just to eventually knock you out. But when Caleb has access to literally his entire deck with Oranguru and Zorark, uh, it, it's not a winning game plan. No, no, it really isn't, uh, unfortunately, for him. Uh, now, it's like, oh, I think that my Diego might have shown a card there accidentally. That's uh, it's all good. So that was that's a sprint. So he's able to discard his hand, draw four more cards, and he's uh, seen. Oh, he has seen a fairy energy from that. So that gets attached to the ground ball straight away. Fairy oh. energy, but two supporters in his hand here. Yeah, he can only play one of those. That fire Checking flint. to see what he has. Gone. Is there a, is there an ultra ball left? I believe so. But oh, that's a great ball. There was one in the yes. prizes. Yes, there is an Ultra Ball left. Okay, so so this is all good. So you can get that, and yeah, that you just. Oh, just but having to discard a no. Fairy Energy and oh. the Tate and Liza. No, 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 no. This is not Those good are at all. Literally, the two cards you don't want to discard <laughs> in this matchup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. Think of very few worse ones. Um, maybe switch, but I mean, that's already gone too. Uh, yeah, that's really not ideal. And he's not even taking two prizes here. He's carrying an Orin Guru for one prize. That's really not the kind of pace that Diego needs to be doing right now. He needs to be going faster for, for no, in terms of tempo of knockouts. And we actually see Caleb have that rainbow energy and counter catcher in his hand. Uh, he could opt to go for limitation here. Yeah, and now Caleb can again, through. like you would have to break the lock eventually because you would have to resource management again. <laughs> yeah, but, and, and this is the problem. If Caleb had you know, had a thicker deck, then he could just literally go for limitation the whole game and just win that way. But because Caleb's deck is so thin, that's no longer an option for him. Yeah, but Although, he did get rid of that fairy energy, leaving Diego with one left in yeah. his deck. Yeah, and the Tate and Lizer as well. So actually, the amount of, amount of even support routes that Diego has to retreat is definitely lessened. There is a Gladion coming from Caleb's side, though. So getting this? Acerola, a wonderful card that combos really well with Rainbow Energy because he put that 10 damage on that Sableye. So when he's done with attacking with Limitation, all right, I'll ace roll it, bring up my Oranguru resource management. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, rinse and repeat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course, uh, ace roll it, enabling you to pick up any Pokemon on your side of the field that has damage counters on it with all cards attached as well. So, yeah, like I said, able to sort of do that sort of mini loop between the Sableye and your Oranguru, getting back the ace roll and do, do damage again. It's uh, pretty, pretty solid. So, um, now, it yeah, looks like, oh, we've just seen there. With uh, the, rescue Stretcher. Yeah, Rescue Stretcher, yeah. So, that surprise, it got shuffled back in. Now, now let's say doing zero damage. Yeah. So no supporters really for just Diego. Yeah, I'm gonna try to lock you out of this game. Oh, there is still three energy. Okay. Okay, so he has been through as many as we perhaps were thought yep. originally then. So they were hiding. Yeah, 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 <laughs> they were hiding. So uh, so Diego did not end as bad of a way as we thought. And of course, Something, something else we should remember is that if uh, at that point where eventually Caleb can't limitation, there is, like you mentioned before, Jeremy, uh, Deamphor as well, which can get back uh, the fairy energy as well. Yeah, but that's if Caleb chooses to take a knockout on Grand Bull. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's true. He might, he might just decide to limitation for the rest of the game. Although, again, he would at some point need to switch it to Oranguru to do resource management because he can't, because the amount of cards in deck, he can't just keep doing limitation forever. That's kind of the turn that uh, Diego needs to exploit. But, but then again, yeah, if he's doing resource management, he's not taking a knockout, so Deamphor is useless regardless. Yeah, so again, Caleb's in a pretty good position here. Yeah, it is just insane to watch how this deck uh, has come together, especially in this matchup where it's so awkward. Like, your opponent's going to try to play with zero cards. Uh, they're not really playing many energy, and they're really fast. But like, it's okay. I'll, I'll bring up your big guys, because... They're forced to play multiple Macargo, multiple Rangaroo, yeah, yeah, Striker on the bench. It's, it's, it's not like you just can't get these guys out. They, they're your engine. They're how your deck operates. You know, if you don't have them out, then you're going to probably be losing anyway because you won't be able to see anything you need. So you know, it's just about trying to play them in a way that impacts you the least and enables uh, Caleb to take advantage of that the least. 
All right, looks like a sprint from Diego here. Yeah, there is supposed to be an, an energy, mysterious treasure, and a rescue stretcher. Now, again, Diego isn't able to get this Makaga out of the active, so he could play out his entire hand if he wanted to, but that doesn't really help him, so he just he's forced to pass again. It'll be no. interesting to see how many cards Caleb actually has left six. Diego has a little bit more than six, I guess I count about ten. Yeah. It's it's definitely not much. And Diego needs to be careful here that he doesn't end up uh, sprinting himself it, out of the game. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because we were talking about how you know, Caleb needs to be careful not to deck out. Now Diego can almost find himself in the same situation. There's a crushing hammer as well, is that a heads? It is. Oh, that is huge. Plumeria as well. Oh my god. Two Goodness. energy, just like that, gone. And, and again, this is the force of the situation even worse because even if now Diego has more energy left, which he probably does, he's going to need to sprint to find them because he doesn't have any in his hand. Sprint to find them, and then you can discard some of the cards you actually okay. need, like the Guzma he drew. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, okay, Diego's deck is a little bit thicker than perhaps we thought, but that is the last energy he has. I did not see any more fairy energy in that deck. So... Oh, okay. yeah, he's just going to pass here. He can't afford to sprint to, to get that. He's just going to have to wait. Oh, and there's a team skull grunt. Uh, Caleb really attacking on all fronts here. Uh, all right, if you don't play down your energy for me to plumeria or crushing hammer it away, I'll skull grunt it from your hand next turn. Yeah, so no matter what you do, I'm just going to stop you from playing Pokemon, and that's how I'm going to win. And that's how these Zoroark control decks operate. We, like you said, uh, Jimmy Pendarvis had success with it as well. Um, even at the uh, North American Internationals uh, from the, the from last season, Todd took a, a similar sort of style of list to second place at uh, there, losing out to. Uh, I think uh, that's pretty much what started it all, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, only only losing out really to uh, Stefan Ivanov in the in the final. Um, Almost becoming uh, twice in a row uh, North American champion, which uh, just insane. Is, is still insane. Yeah, still still hunting for that Latin America yeah. international championship. Yeah, it's going to be the one international championship title he is missing. He's going to be absolutely gunning for it this weekend, and I'm sure, and I'm undoubtedly, I'm sure we'll see him pop up at some point this weekend. Just look at that! Like the yeah. consistency of this deck is insane. Yeah. And, you know, all credit to Diego here. He's being very methodical in how he approaches this. He knows what he needs to do to, you know, try and pull off this win out of nowhere. But that, that is just a deck of cards that do not help you. It's especially no matter what way you spin it, it's just so, so awkward to play around. And Caleb has at least three more, probably four more, no, three more turns of limitation, barring like rescue stretcher or yeah. something like that. He does have a. I think he does have a rescue stretcher in his hand, actually. So he could use that to thicken his deck a bit more. And I don't know if that would necessarily guarantee the win. Yeah, one thing he does have to watch out for is all this damage from Shine and Punishment. Uh, putting in a lot of work here. Yeah. 80 it, damage now on all his GXs. It is, but I'm wondering if there are enough cards in Evil Player's deck to enable those Shrine of Punishment damage counters to add up to the point where they actually take knockouts. That's going to be yeah, the question well here. We do see Acerola and Max Potion in Caleb's hand. Yeah. Two cards that just utterly shuts down this game plan from yeah, Diego. Exactly, just undoing all of Diego's hard work. There's another smooth over. And just another pass. But again, the Shrine of Punishment damage does keep adding up. I think it's up to, it's up to 100 now. There's Acerola. Picking up that Tapu Lele. Yeah. Pal batting back the Acerola end. Looks like a Guzma. Yeah. Could also be eyeing down that Plumeria. Okay. But definitely wants to also prepare yeah. for that turn he does take off from limitation. Yeah. Uh, Diego most certainly will Guzma himself and take a knockout with Granbull. But if you have your own Guzma, you just start it all over again. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, it doesn't matter what Diego does, Caleb just has an answer. Like, you think you have all these alternative game plans and this alternative approach, it just isn't enough. 
And it looks like Caleb's deciding whether to actually do anything more here, but he does decide to just pass again. Yeah, Palpad adding two more turns to this uh, lock right now. Uh, and he's really just needing to play around this Shrine of Punishment. No, and and like and like you said, uh, Jeremy, um, with the access to Max Potion and Acer Roller, um, Caleb's a, in theory only sort of two turns away from basically locking Diego out of any kind of reasonable win condition. Counting the energy there, five energy in the discard, one in play. Uh, Caleb is a very smart player and knows what decks really play. Could he know? Like, yeah, this is your last energy. Yeah. So he keep, might just realize that if I just play a, play a Plumeria and then use Limitation, I just outright win the game. Yeah. Yeah, because that would be Diego out of every single energy resource he Well, he even owns. then, you don't, need, don't even need a Limitation. You just play the Plumeria. Oh, yeah, yeah, just don't take a knockout, yeah. And there we see it. Plumeria, the last energy is gone from Diego. The only way for him to get it back is with Diantha. And that's if Caleb decides to take a knockout on the Grand Bull. Which he's not going to do. <laughs> I mean, we, we say Looking that. Looking through we... his deck, it's nothing of note there. Yeah, then let's move over. Pass. I think Diego can see the writing on the wall. I think he's just hoping that maybe Caleb forgets to heal his Pokemon or something like, uh, or something like that, but... Well, with Acerola being drawn there, it's not looking too likely. No. And again, the win condition just slips and slips away for Diego. And we'll see just another limitation here. Draw. There's the Diantha, but again, nothing left. Three cards left now for Diego. Such, such bad news if, you, if your name's Diego Casadaga. Another Shrine of Punishment. Tick. Draw. Has the Cynthia to even buy more time here. Yeah, he, does, he doesn't, even, doesn't even need to use the uh, resource management on Oranguru. He just Cynthia instead. That's, wow, yeah. And I, I think that is the writing on the wall. Uh, the Cynthia puts more than three turns on the clock, yeah. And wow, what a dominant performance I, performance from Caleb here. It's an insanely impressive uh, play from from Caleb here. And uh, I, unfortunate I, for Diego. I knew there was going to be some sort of Zora control deck. And uh, this this is exceeding my expectations so far. Yeah. It, it's it, going to be interesting to see how Caleb and the rest of his teammates that are probably playing this deck as well do in this tournament yeah. going forward. And you see Caleb just played a skull grunt there, <laughs> and uh, this Diego just showing, look, I've got, I've got a lot, but I've got a lot of nothing. <laughs> like, none of that really helps Diego right now. There is the max potion yeah. on that Zorark and a retreat, and we will see a resource management this turn. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like I said, limitation just almost doesn't even matter at this point. Like, you know, Caleb knows what Diego has access to. He knows that he's completely safe to do that, and. Yeah, there goes Max Potion, Pal Pad, and was that Lysander Labs? Yeah. Yeah. The, like, the only thing Caleb has to worry about is getting something stuck active with Guzma, but with multiple energy in his hand, Pal Pad to even get Acerola, yeah. Rainbow Energy yeah. as well, uh, nothing's really going to get stuck no. up there. Yeah, and, and even then, uh, again, Caleb knows what Diego's hand is like. I don't think there's anything he can really do to stop himself from running out of cards in this deck, so it just... It, uh, again, the win conditions for Diego are like, uh, pretty much all but disappeared at this point. It's, it's really, uh, there's nothing you can really do. Yeah, and Orangaroo being at its best, when you have zero cards in your deck, you can put them back in any order. Just, okay, I'm going to draw this Ace Roller next turn. Then the turn after, I'm going to draw that Lysander's Lab. And then yeah. the turn after that, I'm going to draw Palpat and put yeah. Ace Roller back in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, his deck isn't zero cards because he did play that same pure call, so oh, that's right. yeah, 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 so he couldn't do that that time. But that is something that you can do uh, in theory. And there is another pass from Diego. Oh, I'm sure if, if Caleb just you know puts down a max potion or an ace roller on the table, Diego will probably just extend the hand and say good game. But uh, uh, yeah, no, go, you got to feel for Diego here because he did play his heart out and he did try to adapt his strategy. It just wasn't enough. Yeah, and I know uh, our fellow caster, Joe Bernard, is a big fan of Granbull. So, <laughs> unfortunately, his, his 
His baby's taking a loss round one. Yeah, I know. It's unfortunate. Yeah, there it is. That's a concession. Diego extends the hand. Caleb takes game two, takes the match, and will start off the Latin American International Championships 1 0 0. Yeah. Pretty strong. <laughs> uh, that strong start, strong deck. Yeah. Man, uh, I. It's, it's been a while since I've seen a deck completely lock out their opponent yeah, in it's, standard. Yeah, it's the sort of thing you normally only expect to see in Expanded. You know, you have uh, you know, cards such as like Seismic Toad DX, you do a Quaking Punch attack you know, just to stop your opponent from playing items or stuff like Trevenant as well. But it just proof that you don't really necessarily just need a, 